there's one grave issue that I find poses a major unsurmountable problem for mainstream monotheist religions such as Christianity. A preventative stumbling block to ever believing in an omnipotent, omniscient, all-loving, omnibenevolent creator or deliberate originator of complex biological life. This would be the unaccountable and oftentimes chronically dismissed suffering of sentient non-human animals, extreme, pitiless, drawn-out suffering and painful tribulations, particularly in the wild. Examples may include how predation occurs, such as zebras or gazelles being attacked and solely disemboweled while alive by carnivores like lions, cheetahs, and hyenas, animals crushed to death and suffocated by snakes, burning to death in forest fires. If you can remember the wildfires in Australia in 2020 and the burning, screaming koalas, for instance, or the thousands of baby sea turtles pecked to death and dismembered minutes after hatching on the beach. Many millions not reaching maturity before dying of starvation, infectious diseases, or culled by other gruesome, torturous methods of natural selection. Nature is red in tooth and claw, as the expression goes. And this has been going on for millions of years. Depending on where you put the emergence of phenomenal consciousness slash sentience. I know neuroscientist John Mallet and Feinberg in their book, Ancient Origins of Consciousness place it around the Cambrian explosion period which spans a period of over 50 million years some like Nicholas Humphrey put it later but Wherever the date exactly may be from non-consciousness or primitive cognition in organisms to the ability to feel pain and negative stimuli. This has been going on for a very, very long time on Earth. Where does this enormous quantity of suffering go? How is it atoned for? What sin are they guilty of committing and offending this God? One cannot use the flippant excuse of a free will to answer obfuscate the problem of evil. Concerning the litany of repetitive suffering and harm befalling the animal kingdom, evil that does not arise from a voluntary, uncoerced actions and the decisions made by a human agent. Of course, I'd counter that libertarian free will. The argument, assuming the existence of libertarian free will, is untenable. That, it, that free will is illusion
and just doesn't cut it for other reasons. Nor is the asserted doctrine of libertarian free will very supported when digging into neurobiology, behavioral psychology, genetics, physics, and other scientific disciplines which point toward determinism. But apparently for the anthropocentric theologies of the world, only the chosen humans have central value in this whole earth, the whole boundless universe in fact, was impeccably designed to accommodate our needs and make way for salvation. But where is their redemption? And where is their grace? God could have, at the very least, as the all-perfect, omnipotent engineer of all matter, made it so that prey animals simply drop dead in an instantaneous, painless fashion. And then the predators ate the deceased bodies. However, this ambivalent, at best, second-rate god couldn't even allow that palliative measure. All of these conscious, feeling beings who suffer inordinate, gratuitous amount differ from us only in levels of intelligence and language acquisition, simply viewed as some kind of background filler for our amusement. Useless cannon fodder to the theologians and apologists for a grand purpose, and are condoned to be used, exploited, and tortured by us for any unnecessary proclivity or pleasure, as many Christians, Orthodox, Jews, and Muslims will reflectively follow the I give you dominion over the earth passage in Genesis without a critique or reflection. Many are comfortable and see no problem funding the factory farm prison camps and slaughtering millions of pigs, chickens, and cows all day, 24-7 gassing and boiling them alive for quick, cheap meat products or to be turned into fur coats, even. I find this reprehensible, unmerciful, unloving. If God is love, and difficult, nay, impossible to explain away for ministers, apologists, Constructors of theodicies. All this blabbering about sin, soteriology, the goodness of God, the correct interpretations of the scriptures, the inspirational profundity of the gospel message, it just seems to fall into the category of meaningless, empty sounds, of baby gobbling gook when you force yourself to sit through a video lasting 10 minutes in length, maybe more, of a baby wildebeest being ravenously devoured alive by a pride of lions, still awake and consciously feeling every bit of its small body getting torn apart and its intestines and other internal organs being ripped out at a glacial pace. Catholic Church refrains from even condemning the barbaric, utterly useless traditions like bullfighting in Spain. Of course, there's been some progress since medieval Catholic philosopher Thomas Aquinas went as far as to declare that non-human animals have no intrinsic value and their suffering did not matter, morally speaking inflicting the most appalling, wanton torture and cruelty on them was not wrong or impermissible in of itself because, say, they were beings who have experiential sensory consciousness and shared equal interest in avoiding pain in negatively valent states, Aquinas claimed. 
you advocated that we should abstain from causing excessive cruelty and sadistic abuse to other animals only because it may, from a purely human-centered or consequentialist perspective, desensitize us psychologically toward committing acts of violence or murder against our fellow man. Incidentally, Aquinas believed that those in heaven would derive pleasure and gain great satisfaction in watching the everlasting eternal torment of those unsaved individuals condemned to hell, which he shared with early church fathers like Tertullian, which is a desensitization to suffering taken to the ultimate extreme gleeful sadism. Sadism ascending to disturbing the maniacal heights. I certainly find it impossible to even want to worship, thank, or be grateful for such a careless, sloppy creator as the Christian God. And then if you assume that it's Yahweh of the Old Testament, that's a whole other story. God responsible for this unending charnel house for our planet. I wouldn't want to feel the desire or inclination to worship and bestow thanks and glory even if its very existence could be scientifically demonstrated and empirically verified.